Hi, I'm Curious Cass, and this is Curiosity Junkie. Today's guest has reinvented himself and is always giving back. Please welcome Warren Leaf to the show. Hi, Warren. Welcome to Curiosity Junkie. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. I am absolutely outstanding today. It's been a, a great week and uh, very, very upbeat and in a great, in a great place today. All right, I love it. Well, I saw you, and I I can't remember now for the life of me what group I was in, and you were doing a post, and it took me to your Instagram page, and I was kind of watching your. Uh, video and I did a little checking out and I thought you're connected to some really cool stuff and I just wanted to reach out and have a chat and share with the world what you are doing and your journey to getting there because for me I think it's more about the journey that leads us to the place that brings us happiness and joy is what is the most important message to share because we Absolutely. go through so much to get to that really cool place. So yeah. let's start with a little bit about like, what was your life growing up? Like what kind of childhood did you have? So um, really blessed to have an incredible childhood. So um, have an older sister and um, grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut, which um, very industrial kind of mm -hmm. uh, city, like an hour from New York City. So we're right on the coast, but you know, close to New York City. Um, had a really good childhood. So uh, when I was growing up, my neighborhood was a fairly new development. So there was like a lot of woods and there was, it was, we were just like out all day, right? I mean, yes. today is so different, right? So my mom <laughs> would yell for us at lunch to come in for lunch and she had to yell at us for to come for dinner and then We'd eat really quick and, and out the door. Um, very middle class kind of environment. Um, huge family, really super tight nice. family. And I think it's it really laid the foundation for me and how I raised my kids. And um, we're still very tight. Uh, lost my dad about 11 years ago, uh, but my mom's still alive, still lives in Bridgeport. Nice. And, you know, the pandemic changed the dynamic of seeing her as much, but we still get down there and uh, yeah, it's a great relationship. My boys and my mom have, you know, they're super, super close. And so I, I I'm really blessed to have a really, have had a really good childhood. And um, yeah, you know, my, my school was, was two blocks from my house and, and my, my grandparents and my aunt and uncle lived across the street from the school. Mm -hmm. So I used to go there for lunch every day. I mean, it was just like this oh, really, wow. it was just a really super, great memories of growing up yeah really, really so you don't really have one of those um stories that says you know you had to walk five miles to school uphill all the way and three feet of snow <laughs> so the funny story about that is my mother was born in winnipeg canada oh wow so when we would when we were younger when my kids would say um and so in 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 jewish um grandmother's bubby so they would say hey bubby there's six inches of snow on the ground. We're not going to school today. My mother would say, because literally in Winnipeg, there would be two feet of snow on the ground. They'd walk to school. They'd have to go home for lunch. They'd have to go back to school. She's like, you have nothing at all to complain about. Not besides the fact that it's like 25 below in Winnipeg in the winter. Don't even talk to me about how tough it is to get to school when it's snowing. So yeah, they, she taught them very early on you have no idea how bad it could be. So be thankful for how it is. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's great. That is great. So let's move into how you start your journey. So you grow up, you have a good, good base, which is fantastic. Those values are instilled. You're going to bring those with you into your present yep. life. So you start, what, you go to college, you meet the girl of your oh, dreams. How's oh that go? <laughs> so my sister, um, my sister went to college, went to Syracuse University, got her degree. I knew in high school that I was not college material. And I said to my parents, you know what? I don't want you wasting the money because that's not who I am. So I graduated high school, and then for 
at least three years, just did a lot of different odd jobs. And it got to the point where, you know, my parents would sit me down and say, you know, you got to, you got to figure this out. So I tried college for like a year. There's being that close knit area, there was actually a university less than a mile from my house. So I, I enrolled, I did like a year and a half and not me. So um, really weird how things work in, in your life. A, a friend of mine, his aunt owned a pharmacy in the next town over and she needed someone to work in the, in the pharmacy. So I said, all right, I'm going to go work part time, make some money. Well, her husband was a computer programmer for a large company in Connecticut. And so he wanted to automate the pharmacy. So he got this Apple computer that I had no idea what it was. And he said, why don't you start doing some data entry? And I was like, this is kind of cool. Yeah, so yeah. they actually took some computer classes in college and they had a, um, like a, an employment center for kids to try to get them. So I actually got my first job at a local bank and long story short, I work, I've been in IT for 30 years and really all self-taught. So, you know, and it, the problem with that is while I've had a really great career, my kids saw, oh, dad didn't go to college and he did really good. Why do I have to go to college? So the, the conversations around when I was growing up, you know, when I, 40 years ago, yeah, you might not need a degree, but you know what, guys? It's not even an option. So you guys are going, but we had these battles for like a really long time of, dad, you do great. You, you have no idea, guys, what it took me over the period of time to figure this out. It just, you know, when... And back in the day, it was really the passion, right? I was like so driven by computers and I was this techy guy that, that figured it out. Um, so, so that was kind of my career in, in IT and, and kind of moving that direction. And then um, just through a group of friends, I had, um, I had met at the time my girlfriend and we were together five years and then we got married and we were married 31 years. Wow, that's a long yeah. time. It's a that's long a time. Long. Yeah. That's a so, lifetime. It is. It really is. Most yeah. people say, wow, 31 years. Like, I can't, you know, we've been married five, six. I can't imagine 31. And I said, you know, it's, it's, it, it, it's a, uh, it, it's a journey for sure. Yeah. It's a, it's like a roller coaster ride. It's good days it and bad a, days. And yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and some really, really great memories. You know, with, yes taking the kids to Disney or just, you know, to wherever we were and just family kind of thing. So there's, there's all good memories buried in everything, you know, there's the good and the bad. And um, unfortunately it, it didn't extend all the way. And, and we, we ended a couple of years ago, but yeah, lots of great memories in, in that time. Right. Well, let's, let's talk about that for a little bit because I know divorce is a very, I've been through it. I was married 22 years and today it's like, I think we're at, Nine, ten years after, my ex and I are very good friends. We get along fantastic. And it's so important because both of our kids have married in that time frame and our son has a baby. So you're always together. And so it's I think it's really important to find a way to heal first yourself. You have right. to heal yeah. yourself because yes. it's a loss. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's a loss of 31 years for you. So let's talk about that a little bit. What were you going through? Was it you? Were you going through something that was like, I'm unhappy, something's not right in my life? So I'm yeah, going I mean, to like the weeds, but. <laughs> no, yeah, no, to be really transparent, I was, I was, I did everything. So I did the cooking, I did the cleaning and I did the grocery shopping. And um, I really like, you know, when, when there was parent teacher things, I did that. So um, I just got to the point in in my life that I said, you know what, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in a place where I'm just surviving. Mm -hmm. I'm not thriving anymore. I'm just surviving. And as I got to that stage in my life, I just said, I can't do this anymore. I, I don't want to end my life. I don't want my life to end and me being this unhappy. Yes. And I said, and I know, Mike, everyone, it was so obvious to everyone so that when we announced it, so when we announced it to the boys, they took it hard. And um, it's the part of that healing process is rebuilding relationship with the boys because, you know, th there's a lot around divorce. 
So my, my younger son came with me. My older son lives in New York City, lives and works in New York City. So Kyle and I, my younger son and I have had the opportunity to kind of rebuild because he's here. Yes. So yes. it's easier. With Brandon, it's tougher because especially now with, with the pandemic, we went five months before we even saw it which since we've seen each other. So you can do Zooms like this and phone calls, but you don't have that personal interaction, it's harder. So there's there's been that rebuild, but <clears throat> for me, there's been a huge rebuild. And it's um, really redefining my life at 60 um, is, is this journey that I never thought I'd really go on, but it's a really cool journey. But to your point about um, healing and building the relationship back, it, I don't, I think it was probably a year that my wife, my ex-wife and I didn't even really acknowledge each other. We would text if we had to, if it was something about the kids, it was something about post-divorce, whatever. But then I got to the point where I said, I'm in a place where I need to bring her back in. I need to get the family unit to the best of my ability back together. So we've been more communicative. Um, she's had some health issues, so we're trying to help her with her health issues. I think it was a Memorial Day weekend. We ha I had her over for a cookout, so it was Kyle and my ex, and, and I'm slowly, it's it's getting better. And um, she got it recently, got a new job, and she needed some stuff done, so we went over to her place and helped her. So it's it's taken a year and a half to get to the point where we can be together. Mm -hmm. But it's it, probably it, still a little awkward. It, it's extremely awkward. Yeah. It is extremely, and, and now there's someone else in my life, so it's even more difficult. I know that there's there's significance in, in bringing us back together to the best of our abilities. Will we ever be best friends? No, but can we co-parent and coexist and be able to go to family things together? Yeah. There's no there's there's no process specific process to it everybody yeah. has to find that that compromise and that thing that works for them some people never do and but i i really do i think it's important and i would encourage people if you can find a way to get past the hurt and heal yourself and yep. then you can move into trying to heal that relationship it will never be what it was but there's nothing that says it can't be different and good just in a different way and for me to be perfectly honest, I think it could be better. I think we, we would be better as friends than we were as a married couple. And that's really what I'm hoping for is that we do heal and we can be social and we can be friends and, and have the, you know, that time together going forward where it isn't, it isn't uncomfortable and it's more relaxed. So during this time of change and growth for you, you, it sounded like you started cycling more. So cycling was a really interesting story for me. So Brandon, my older son, had some um, motor skill coordination issues when he was younger. So I couldn't get him on a bike until he was 13. Oh, wow. So I, I, yeah, I got him on a bike and um, we lived on a cul-de-sac. So it was great. You can just kind of cycle around. There wasn't traffic. And so I'd come home from work and we'd get on the bike, we'd ride, and I started finding it kind of therapeutic at the end of the day, just kind of burning off that energy. And so I started riding more and more. And even when he wouldn't go, I would keep going and ride out of the neighborhood and worked up to like 25 mile rides on the weekend and said, you know what? I want to do something with more people. I want to make it more of a social thing. So I started looking for, <clears throat> excuse me, I started looking for more organized rides and I found this charity ride called Angel Ride, and it benefited this organization called the Hole in the Wall Gang Camp that Paul Newman started like 27 years ago. That's cool. It was really cool, but it was a 135 mile ride over two days across Connecticut. Well, I had done 25, I gotta go to 135, okay, how do I get there? So where I work, we had a fitness center, and I went into the manager and I said, I need you to train me for this ride. And she said, well, I cycle and a bunch of the members of the fitness center cycle. So why don't we put a team together and we'll all train and we'll all do the ride. So cool. So it's Memorial Day weekend every year. Um, we did it for 10 years. They unfortunately, they ended it. But um, so right across Connecticut, it's like 85 miles the first day. Then you actually stay at the camp. 
and then the next day you'd finish up. And um, so that got me kind of into the fundraising side of, of my life because um, the hole in the wall camps offices were in the same building as, as my office was. So we got to meet the, the staff. We did volunteer days there and that kind of motivated me to get in, into the fundraising side. So yeah. cycling yeah. is really what drove, what got me into all of the different fundraising that I did because I just kind of wanted to elevate what I was doing. And But cycling was absolutely the, and, and in the weirdest way, got me into uh, giving back. Yes, yes. Okay, so since you brought that up, let's talk a little bit about, you kind of have your own thing that you're doing. And then you're also involved in a really cool charity. I went on and checked it out and Adam's house, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that is just fantastic. What, what a great organization to be involved in. And you are on the board of directors, correct? I am. Yeah. For about a year now. So, um, yeah. So when I, home wall was great, but, um, I, I, you didn't have that interaction with kids and families because, you know, a lot of respect around, you know, giving them their privacy and, and what they need to do. But the fundraising aspect was really important. And I knew I wanted to do a little bit more. So um, I did some research and I found Make-A-Wish Foundation, oh, yeah. which is really an amazing organization. So I, I wrote to them. I said, I'd love to get involved. And they said, sure, you can become a wish grantor and you actually work with the families to figure out what kind of wish they want to do and, and work through the process. It was like a three month process to get approved between, you have to take classes and background checks and they're very, very thorough and making sure that you're the right person and three or four different sets of interviews, but which I was cool. really- Which is good really, to know, right? Yeah, I mean, they are, they are so into uh, child protection and privacy and fa and they need to know that the right people are working with these families and over a three-year period I, I I was involved in 13 wishes 12 of them actually came true unfortunately one of them didn't but um, changed my life forever because I would go into these really difficult parts of Bridgeport or New Haven some tough cities in Connecticut and if, if I may just give a story because it was yeah, it was yeah. it was really kind of cool for me. So you you work in pairs when when you meet the families. So I, I had met my partner, we drove to this very difficult part of Bridgeport, and we parked our car and there were two gentlemen sitting on a wall. And I was like, I almost didn't want to get out of the car because I was a little concerned. We get out of the car and they came over to us and they said, are you the guys from Make-A-Wish? Are you going to see her, her? And I said, yeah, we are. And they said, we got your back. Your car is fine. You're fine. What you're doing is so cool. Don't you worry about a thing. It was really amazing. Wow. We walked into the house, which was very small. And there must have been 15 family members there. I mean, the family units of, of the 13 families I did, that was the most amazing thing was the spirit of family, mm. you're rallying around this, this sick child. That was really, it was really amazing. Um, but in Connecticut, there's a waiting list of like 300 people to be wish granters. And I really wanted other people to have that experience. So I resigned after three years, but wanted to kind of keep the momentum going. And there's a website that actually matches up people that want to work with nonprofits. And I found Adam's house. It's truly an amazing organization. It's only about three years old. Uh, and the founder, Allison Wysota, is a remarkable woman. And what Adam's House does is they provide peer uh, grief support for kids between 5 and 18 who have lost a family member. So a mother, a father, a sibling, whatever it is. And they, they put the kids in groups. So every child that's in this group has lost a parent or the other group, they've lost a sibling. So it, it, it's not apples to oranges. Everyone is experiencing the same thing. Um, and it's, it, yeah, again, one of those, it, it, it is amazing. It, it, it's really amazing. So um, they're growing. They actually do have, Adam's house actually is a house in Shelton, Connecticut that they remodeled and it's it stunning. looks beautiful. I went on the website, yeah, checked it out, watched a yeah. few videos. Yeah, it's very, yeah. very cool. 
it, it's very cool what they do. And uh, yeah, I'm just so blessed to have found that opportunity. So yeah, it kind of drives me. Absolutely. Yes. Oh, no, no, I think it's a, a great experience. So you're basically there, you're basically connecting kids with other kids in a support system. Correct. To get through that grieving process. Right. That loss, loss again, loss of any kind, divorce, death, it's a tough process to go through and we all do it differently. All yes. do it differently. So I think, I just think that's so powerful to have that connection for those kids. Yeah, the, for those kids, because they, they build those relationships for the rest of their life, and they always have someone that they can count on in their age group right. that they can that, that they can you know work through. So, yeah, it's it's a pretty cool organization. Yeah. Now, has yeah. that changed a little bit with COVID? Is it a little harder? Yeah, it was. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, because um, a lot of the families didn't have the technology quite honestly, to do Zoom. I mean, you know, they tried to do Zoom sessions. Families didn't want to come into the house because you really couldn't social distance given the number of kids. So yeah. they tried different things, but now it's starting to open up a little bit. And as things start to relax in Connecticut, they're going to get the families and programs started. But yeah, there was a pause um, for a couple months while they kind of re figured out how they're going to do it. And they tried to do some virtual, but it's... I mean, it's certainly not the same as those kids doing activities together side by side. Right, right. No, I, 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 I do think it's a shame that COVID has impacted so many different so many things. things. Yeah. And a lot of it is impacting children. And that's kind of yeah. sad in a way. But what a beautiful yeah, group to be connected to and yeah. what they're doing is amazing. It's all about adapting, right? I mean, everything we do is, yes. is really about how you adapt and, and um, you know, the early me, 10 year ago me, didn't really have the capability to adapt. So I would, something would go wrong and I would just internalize it and I would just kind of collapse in myself and I would just be this horrible, I would get very quiet and everybody knew there was something, what's wrong? And I would say, everything's great. And it, no, it's not. And the new me, the reinvented me is, is much more um, capable of adapting and saying, you know, okay, so what, you know what? Um, some of the live streams that I've done, I've talked about expectations and how damaging expectations can be because if, if you set expectations and they don't happen the way you want, I mean, they can really set you in a bad way. So all of this two-year journey has taught me so much and, and not being disappointed is, is huge. And so when it, when Closer Free got canceled, all right, how else are we going to do this? And to your point, you can still fundraise and you can still do what you need to do. So it's right, we'll, we'll right. still make an impact for, for people. So it's all good. Absolutely. And I always think about times like this are little reminders that – as much as we think we're in control or want to be in control, we really are not in control. We're really not in control. <laughs> we control very little, actually. Little. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. Well, let's yep. move into what you're doing individually, your um, Instagram, giving back always. Giving back always. Yeah. Yes. Um, let's talk about that a little bit and what you're doing, because that sounds like a fun project. Yeah. So, um, you know, part of, Part of my um, rebuild, reinventing myself, I and mean, it's kind of my my bio on my Instagram page is, is redefining my life late in life. Um, and so, what I've found is is people need motivation, they need inspiration, they need something to look forward to. And I was really blessed last February. Um, I was a guest on Mel Robbins' show. So, yes. uh, yeah, yeah. Mel That's is, the is, group then. It was Mel Robbins' yep. group. Mel, yes. Mel, yep. <laughs> so she did something called Best Decade Ever. And she did a show in February dedicated to Best Decade Ever. And so I was one of five guests, at the, which was really amazing. And what I learned being part of, so she has two Facebook groups and they're, they're, they're really well populated. And I would start, putting up motivational messages and inspirational messages. And I would get 15 people writing me back saying, 
thank you so much. I needed to hear that today. And it started growing and it got this groundswell of, I think there's more people that really need help right now than are really in a good place. And so, and I was never an Instagram person, like my kids use and say, dad, check out Instagram. Well, I found it to be much more personal and, and just quick updates and little things about people. So I started building that and I started posting what I would post on Facebook on Instagram and got a much bigger response for whatever reason. Yeah. And I went from like 200 followers to 1900 followers in six months. And it, it, it's really weird because it's kind of stopped at like 19 something and it's just kind of up and down a little bit. But what I found was people would, co- would kind of congregate and say, we, if I didn't post for like a day or two, people would actually send me messages like, are you okay? Why aren't you, po- what's going on? I was like, huh, there's something here. And then the pandemic hit and all these people started to you know, un- lose their jobs for all the different reasons. And I'm very blessed that I have a job and I can also work from home. So found myself in a position where, and it's kind of the reason I got into volunteering was I have two very healthy, happy, great kids and all these other families are dealing with, you know, such pain and suffering and their kids. So that that's kind of what got me into volunteering. And so now on the Instagram side is how can I help people who are trying to build their business or reinvent themselves? How, what can I do? And I started um, taking some of the motivational things that I would post and I would start doing live streams just uh, of me and got the idea, well, what if I do a live stream with someone who's trying to promote a service that they have or a product that they have? And I just sent out one day, if you guys want to do a DM to talk about your projects, let me know. I think I'm like my 15th live stream now and it's great. They're like 30 minute segments and it's just, what do you do and how long have you been doing it? And what is your website? And I, you know, when, when people come on and they start talking about what they do and, and what their brand is, they're so motivated and they're so animated and it's great. And I've had three or four people come back two and three times to, to do it, which is great. And the other interesting thing is three of the people that I've done it with are from the UK. Oh, wow. So it really doesn't even matter where you are. Right? I mean, that's the beauty of technology today and the ability for us to, to do this. Right. So once you figure out the time zone difference, because it's like five hours. So, you know, I do it at two o'clock my time. It's seven o'clock there, but, but it works. And to get the exposure for them, once I do the live stream on Instagram, I then take the link and I post it on Facebook and I post it on LinkedIn because I have a really big, group of people on LinkedIn and I'm just trying to get the word out and just trying to help people get the word out for their own business. And, and I find it very rewarding. It's, it's just been a really, for me, rewarding thing to just help people get the word out right now. Right. Yeah. And that, I do think that's a big piece of it is everything kind of has gone online yeah. Uh, shopping. Uh, we were talking about that the other day. You know, you have to go in and, and wear a mask and there's nothing wrong with wearing the mask. It's just that it's easier to stay at home and shop online now. <laughs> and we've all gotten yeah. very comfortable yeah. with it. <laughs> so if you can help promote somebody's online business, I, you know, I'm all about inclusion and bringing people together and I, anything that helps somebody else is a wonderful thing. So that's why you just clicked with me and I was like, oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta check him out and see what he's doing. And well, thank you. See if I, can talk I, to you. I will say something very interesting about this whole process is when I reach out to people, you know, I, I make it very clear. It's, I'm doing it for free. I really don't want anything back. There's no obligation to you. And what I do is when someone says I'm kind of interested, I set up a phone call so we can just have a conversation about what they do and when we want to do it. Is there anything else you want to share with everybody um, or? Right, I went from like a survival to a healing state in my life. And I love where I am right now. And the work isn't done. There's still some right. work to be done. But I, I, I understand kind of what it is to be on the other side of that. And I just, 
if, if I had a career opportunity to change, because I've done IT for a really long time, that would be kind of like where I, how can I help people get to the other side to where I am? How can I get people from survival to healing and then living a much better life? So that's kind of my next part of my journey. Right. Well, Warren Leaf, I would love to do the final five with you and um, ask you my questions if you're up for it. Sure. All right. First one is what's your favorite word? My favorite word. Yeah. Um, my, my favorite word is outstanding. Outstanding. I like that word. That's a great one. A good positive one. Yeah. All right. What turns you off? Um, what turn negative fake people turn me off. I, I completely agree with you on that one. So what sound or noise do you love? Oh, I'm, I'm really blessed to l literally live in, uh, a mile from the beach. Oh yeah. So, so my town is we're right on long Island sound and we could actually see long Island, you know, on, on a clear day and just being at the beach and hearing the waves. It's nice. just, yeah, yes. it's the best. It's the best. Yeah. Yeah. I have a friend in Laguna beach right now and he was recording the waves of the sound and I'm like, Oh, oh it's yeah, such it's, a beautiful it's, sound. It is. <laughs> I love that sound. All right, now this one's always uh, a little dangerous, but what's your favorite cuss word? <laughs> oh, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you use your imagination on that one. I'm not going to say that one, but I will tell you. So again, transparency. I have found, and my kids <laughs> will tell me that I have used that word more in the past six months than in their 29 years of life. And I don't know why, but lately, like this past year, it's like my go-to word. And they're like, dad, what's up with that? I'm like, you know, honestly, I, I don't know, but they're like, we don't like it anymore. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll try to change. But yeah, it, it's, it's very- I'm taking it that it's the F word. It is the F word, yes, yes. it is. And I, 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 I don't a, understand it. You'd be surprised how many people love that word. And I think the biggest thing I have found is that people love it because it's a release. It's so, it's a passionate release. Thank you. Yes, Feel it, it and you're like, yes. that feels so good. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I totally Yes, agree. absolutely. Right, right. Okay, so you gotta work on that for the kids. Yep, <laughs> I do, I do. You're like, just when they're around at least. <laughs> and then you might have already answered this, but um, what, what other profession outside of the one you're currently doing would you like to attempt? Yeah, I, I think life coaching and mentoring mm. for me is, I, I have nothing formal behind me to, to do that, but I think life in general can, can be that, that best teacher, right? And just everything that I've experienced. And one of the things that I try to do on Instagram is focus towards dads that, are, that have gone through divorce, especially old, later in life, dads like me that's where i really want to try to help people is here's how i've gotten to this point and how can i help you get to that same point and then yes. just healing in general how do you go from surviving your life to healing your life to being where you want to be in your life and those are the things that i really want to kind of focus on now yes and i think it's much more difficult for men and i could be wrong on this so correct me if i am because society says men are just strong, boys don't cry, you don't yeah, really right. have emotions, you don't feel. <laughs> we send that message out and it's really sad because it is a, it's a difficult and very emotional process and change in your life. Yeah. And it's, I think it's a shame that men aren't able to speak as openly as women are. We're very verbal, men aren't. Yep. And that you do that and want to do that for other men, I think is super powerful. And that message is a beautiful message. And one that I think other men need to know that there is support out there. There, right. are, yep. there are places and people that are talking about feelings and emotions and dealing with them and how right. to move through yep. them and get to the other side. Uh, yeah. So that's great. And that's one thing I love about your message is that, You've been through that and yep. you're, you're working on it. I think we're always a work in progress. I don't think always, we ever get yeah. to that, you know, masterpiece, but we're always 
changing and growing. And if you're not, you're dying. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you so much for coming on. And uh, thank everybody else for joining, tuning in, watching. And stay curious, my friends. Thanks so much. Thank you.